amazing job on this film. I can't. Man, I can't recommend it enough. It was badass for sure. Oh, thank you. Um, first and foremost, I talked to, to the producers on this, and they said that like you had this very well thought out of exactly kind of what you wanted to do. So can you walk me through a little bit of what your look for Birds of Prey was going to be and how it all came together? <laughs> sure. Um, a lot of it was inspired by Harley and this idea of we wanted to create a new type of Gotham that felt more like on the ground mm -hmm. instead of in these high towers in the center of power, per se. Um, and I wanted it to feel um, very gritty and 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 layered and textured and tactile, but also colorful um, and full of little details. Um, because I think it's a world where like the system doesn't really work. It's pretty broken. Obviously, crime is just you know has infested the city. There's a plenty of corruption, but at the same time, there's such a hope and will to live, and people are still having a good time and partying, and they're just sort of like kind of making do with right, the way right. it is. Um, and that was kind of pulled from like I think how New York felt in the '70s and mm -hmm. the '80s, where it was just kind of full on anarchy. But then there's like so much creativity, and you hear about these wild stories and these crazy characters. And so that was kind of the basis for the world of Gotham. And we purposely wanted to make it feel different and kind of on the fringe, so almost like in the outer boroughs. And I love the choice of characters because especially in the fight sequences, you have you have Renee Montoya who's more of a brawler, mm -hmm. Huntress is more like John Wick, mm -hmm. then you got Harley who's full of weapons yeah. and trickery, and um, and Black Canary who uses a lot of kicks. Yep. Can you talk to me about the action sequences and how that all played into the characters and informed the characters? Sure. I'm um, very very early on we we um, developed individual styles for each character that kind of matched both the um, you know their back their background what they're about um, but also their attitude right. and sometimes it was just like like for example with Rosie Perez she freaking loves boxing um, she's like called the first lady of boxing and so of course we were like yeah we're gonna we're gonna teach her boxing and it made sense as a police woman you know like that she would have le learned that skill and so yeah we definitely try to make sure that they all had different individual styles and then so that when they do finally come together they're such a great team right because they're all you know they all have like a different strength now yeah. you said that this was this is a very street level version of Gotham mm -hmm. street level heroes at its most part. Is this a part of DC that you'd like to explore further, or would you like to kind of move outside that realm into like another realm of DC? I love this part of DC. I love Gotham, and I think what I loved about Gotham always was that these characters felt real and grounded and like very mischievous and dark, but um, you know, it, I prefer, I think, this kind of thing over like uh, flying capes. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, now, uh, this obviously is very ground level. Uh, can you talk? To, well, also, I want to ask. Chris told me something that mm -hmm. he did so many different takes mm -hmm. of his character, and I like the bounciness because usually Zaz is written as kind of like the straight up serial killer. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about um, the bounciness and how how you kind of went with that performance? Same thing with you in it. Mm -hmm. So terrifying and hilarious at the same time. Yeah, I mean that's how I love to work with the actors. Actually, is to kind of give them space to you know, explore, improv, um, you you know, they're always motivated, you know, by the characters, and we talk a lot about that and what the scene is about, but then when, on the day, we actually have a lot of fun, and so right. every take was pretty different, and that's kind of like how I like to work, because honestly, you just need one, right? You just want, need one good take, or you need one little moment or detail, and so I know I, a lot of filmmakers I admire kind of work that way, and I, I was really happy that I was able to do that on this movie, too. Now, outside yeah. of Harley, which character would you like to explore further? Oh, gosh, I think all of them are super <laughs> interesting, yeah. Um, I Really, I do, I think so. Um, I guess if I had to pick one, just because there's, I think she's such an interesting mystery in the movie is Huntress, you know, and how she like opens up at the yes. end. So it would be really nice to like play with that more. That's yeah. a lot of fun. And also, um, the voice of Harley is is throughout this movie. How hard is it translating that from the page to the screen? Yeah, well, you know, it's pretty easy when you've got Margot Robbie sure, doing sure. it. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, I think it allowed us to just play around with style and breaking the fourth wall and, um, you know, and, and, and even the way the, the story is told, which is completely, like, haphazardly because that's how Harley would tell it, yeah. <laughs>